Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to address append query mistake number one. You get an error message saying the insert into statement contains the unknown field name. And then whatever your field name is, make sure you have typed the name correctly and try the operation again. How do you fix that? I got a bunch of emails and comments from people after last week's append query video asking about a couple of different error messages that they get. And I've seen this time after time after time again when teaching my classes. People always have the same couple of problems that they encounter when using append queries. So in this and the next couple of videos, I'm going to explain how to resolve the common problems that you get. If you have not yet watched this append query video, go watch it now and then come back and we'll continue on with fixing some mistakes all right so the first mistake most people get is this one the insert into statement which insert into is the sql language name for an append query access calls it an append query in sql the language and sql server it's called insert into statements okay it's the same thing but it's saying it contains an unknown field name that means you're trying to insert into a field called something that's not in the destination table. All right, this usually comes up when you're using the asterisk, which is why I said in the previous video, if you're a beginner, don't use the asterisk. Oh, and someone just beamed in. So let me set this up and show you how to fix it. Okay, take three. This is my tech help free template. You can grab a copy off my website. It's take three because the last couple of takes, I said you can grab a coffee. I have coffee on the brain. Someone send me a Starbucks, please. You can grab a copy of this database off my website if you want to. You'll find a link down below. Same one we used in the last database. And I got my little append spreadsheet down here. It's in Microsoft Excel. There it is. Okay, we're going to import this stuff into the database and append them to the customer table. Just like we did in the last video. But I want to run through the import again to show you what most people do when they do the import. Okay. All right, so real fast, we're going to do external data, new source, from file, Excel. Go grab it off my desktop. There it is. Open. Import. All right, first name contains column headings. Yes, next. Okay, this is all fine. Next. No primary key, don't need one. Next. Sheet one, and we're done. Okay, there's my data. All right, looks good. Now, here's what people do when they try to do the append query, okay? Query design, bring in sheet one, close that, all right? Now, at this point, change it to an append query, customer T, and here's the mistake people make, okay? They bring in the star. They want to append all the fields. All right, fine. You want to take all of these fields and append them into the fields in the customer table. Good enough. Run the query. There's your error message. Okay. Insert into statement contains the following field name, first name. Well, I don't understand. I've got a first name field here. I've got a first name field here. I got first name. I got last name. I got address. What's the problem? Why isn't this working? Well, the problem is when you imported this data, you kept the field names from Excel, right? First space name. See the space in there? Last space name. Email space address, which is totally different from email. These have to match exactly, and that's why you're getting that error insert into statement. All right, access is not a mind reader. It can't tell that first space name is the same as first name. So there's a couple ways to fix it. You could fix it on the import if you want to. Let me show you. Delete this guy. All right, delete sheet one, yes. All right, if you go to the import, uh, where are we going to? Oh, external data, duh, brain fart. Uh, Excel, all right, browse to my file, right there, open, okay. Now, here's where we can fix it, right? First name contains the column headings, next. Right here on this screen, you can change these guys so they match. First, no space name. Last, no space name. And then email address is just email. Okay, next. 
No primary key, because you don't want that ID either, right? Then you got to match this thing up, which is a pain. And this is a topic for another video we'll be talking about soon. No primary key. Next. Sheet one is fine, and then finish. Okay? Now, these match these exactly. Each one of these has a corresponding field down here. Okay? And now, I can create my query. Bring in sheet one. Make it an append query into customer T, okay, bring down the star, and now when I run it, all right, nothing appears to happen, check your table, and there you go, all your records are down here. All right, and again, like I mentioned in the last one, there's Will Riker here, Bill Riker there, if you index this guy, no duplicates, you'll get a warning message saying you got one record that they can't import because of a duplicate key violation. The other way you can fix this if you're not doing an import, if you're just taking it from table to table, is literally just go in your source table, design view, change the field names in here. And if that's not an option, if you can't match up the field names from the source with the field names with the destination table, then you can't use the star. Okay? You just, you can't. You can only use the star if all of the fields match up. If not, you have to bring over the fields one at a time like I did in the last video and match them up that way in the columns. Okay, so there you go. There's app pen query mistake number one. I got more coming. There's at least one more mistake that I see all the time. We'll do that in the next video. All right, hope you learned something. We'll see you next time. If you want to learn more about action queries in general, I've got a five class series that covers everything you want to know about them. It's over eight hours of lessons just on queries, mostly Update queries, append queries, delete queries, make table queries, tons of different examples. I even go over some things that aren't action queries like union queries as putting two tables together, cross tab queries, basically like pivot tables in Excel. So my Microsoft Expert 13 through 17 classes. I'll put a link below that you can click on to find out more information. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout-out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1.
Yep, that's all. One dollar. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.